Hey guys, welcome back to another game development video. This time we're going to do a video separate from the series on the shooting gallery game. I thought it would be a good idea to make a separate video on creating physical materials so you can adjust the physical properties of objects in the world such as density, friction, and bounciness. And after this video I'll also be uploading a video on creating the graphical materials so you can adjust things like the texture, the reflectivity, stuff like that. We're here in the first person template project and if you want to see how to create a new project you can click the video linked right here. The first thing we want to do is create a separate folder for our own content. So make sure the content folder is selected, right click, new folder, call it my content. And in here let's make a folder called materials, new folder. Now in here so there's two different types of materials. If you right click and you go to create a new material, this is like the graphical material. But once you create a graphical material, then you can go inside the graphical material and assign the physical material. So let's go ahead and do that. Let's make a separate folder for physical materials. New folder inside the materials folder called physical materials. And let's say we wanted to make something heavier so by default these objects are pretty lightweight you know takes not a lot of force to send them flying inside the physical materials folder if you right click if you go into physics new physical material and you have to click this and click select and let's call this heavy material So we can go into here, it's pretty basic, there's not very many properties. So we got the friction, which is how slippery it is, the restitution, which is how bouncy it is, and the density. So the density can be, if it's zero, then the thing's going to be weightless, and it can go up to as high as you want. It says the mass is grams per cubic centimeters. So let's change the density to just something like 100 instead of 1. So it'll be a hundred times heavier than the default material. Now let's make a actual graphical material that we can assign that physical material property. So let's go to the new material we made. Let's rename it heavy material or not heavy material because that'll be the same name as a physics. So let's call it iron material. Let's go into here. So the first property here physical material drop down menu and there it is heavy material and I'll talk more about the graphics in the next video but for now let's at least choose a color so we can differentiate all these materials that we're gonna make so let's right click this pin promote to parameter and let's just choose a color by clicking this box using the color picker double click so iron is something like brown dark brown gray Okay, click save, close. Now it's really easy to apply this material to objects. There's two ways to do it. You can either click an object and choose the material from the drop down menu. Here it is. Or you can just click and drag. So now if we shoot this object, it should be, wait, let me um, move it in front of the camera. It should be a lot heavier. Yeah, so it doesn't even move. And of course, if you want to make a lightweight material, let's go ahead and do that. Let's duplicate this by selecting it, pressing Control W. Let's call this light material. So if one is default, let's make this 0 0.1. So let's make a new material called like cardboard material. Let's duplicate this, Control W cardboard material and let's just adjust the color a little bit just to make it look different okay then we click this module here the main module so we can assign the light material so let's see how they behave heavy light 
aside from density, let's do friction. So let's make a new physics, physical material. Click this, select, and this is gonna be slippery material. So the friction by default is a 0 0.7. This can be anywhere from zero to one. So if it's zero, it's gonna have no friction at all. It's not gonna actually be zero because by default, it's gonna average out the frictions of the two objects that are touching. So the ground probably has a friction of like 1.0. So if we bump this object, it's not gonna actually slide forever like you would expect an object with zero friction to. But let's just see how it looks and then I'll show you how to change that to actually be zero friction. So um, let's make a material for that. Let's just duplicate one of these. Let's just pick a nice light blue. All right, click and drag. So now this is gonna be a little bit more slippery than these other objects. So this one, when you run into it, it wants to tip over, it doesn't wanna slide. This one, just wants to slide. But yeah, it's still not completely zero friction because the math in this physical material is averaging out the frictions of the two surfaces that are touching. See right there, uses the average value of the materials touching, A plus B divided by two. So what we wanna do is click this little box to override the friction combined mode. And then we can take either the lower value or the higher value or if you really know what you're doing, multiply, you can do that, but we're not gonna even worry about that. So minimum is gonna just take the lower value, which in this case is gonna be zero. So no matter what type of material this ice block is sitting on, it's always gonna have zero friction. So now if we bump it, it's just gonna keep sliding forever. See that little tiny force? It's just gonna keep going until it hits the wall. So, that's how to use the combined mode. And of course, if you do maximum, it's just gonna take on the friction, this case, of the floor. So it'll be just like the cardboard or something. If you're trying to make something very slippery, you should probably use minimum. If you're trying to create like a basic like material like wood or metal or cardboard, you might wanna use average. Um, so aside from density and friction, is also restitution, which is how bouncy the object is. So let's make a bouncy material. Physics, physical material, select. So the default values here. So for restitution, let's make it a 1.0, which is the maximum. You can't go over 1.0 because that's gonna already return 100% of the force when an object collides. And just like in real life, there's no material in existence that actually returns 100%, but beyond that, there's nothing that will return more. So if you try to type in a 10, it's just gonna go back down to one. So again, this has the combined mode. So if you wanna do something extreme, like 100% bounciness, then you, we'd ha you'd have to take the maximum of that. But let's just show you what it looks like with the average. So let's make a new material, change it to bouncy. So this is not gonna actually have 100% bounciness. It's gonna have 50% probably because the floor is probably 0% bounciness. But let's see what happens. So yeah, it bounces about 50% of the height of each bounce. What would happen if you put a bouncy object on top of another bouncy object? Well, since they're gonna average out the, in theory, the one bouncing on top should keep bouncing because the average of one and one is one. So let's see what happens. So yeah, it's just gonna keep bouncing really high. Oh, unless it falls off. Do it again. A little bit more bouncy than the one hitting the, the solid floor. So let's combine it or compare them like that. Yeah. So if you wanted to actually make it full bounciness no matter what it's colliding with, then again, you just have to go in here and change the combined mode by checking this box and you probably wanna have maximum. So close that. Now, let's get rid of these. Now this is probably just gonna keep bouncing forever. 
probably up to the same height. See, go into the same spot on the crosshair every time. So those are the main three properties in any material, the friction, the restitution, and density. Aside from that, if you want to have giant objects, maybe you want to adjust this value. You can see the tooltip, it says, because certain objects are not like solid, like for example, a car, you don't want to actually have the volume of the object calculated by the actual like volume of the object. You want to just, if for giant objects, you want to have it like kind of hollow. So then you would, instead of having a one here, you would reduce this value depending on how hollow the object is. So by default, this is 0 0.75. Um, destruction, there's a type of object that can be destroyed and fragment into other smaller objects. So this is sort of like how durable it is. Surface type, not really sure what this is, but more advanced stuff I'm sure that is not relevant to this video. And I think that about wraps up the physical materials. Now in the next video, I'm gonna show you how to make some more graphically pleasing materials instead of just solid colors like this. So let me know if you guys have any questions and I will see you in the next video.